So here we are in Mr Chippy's workshop and he's well underway in starting to change the capacitors on this 1966 HMV Stereo Master 2018. So this part of this is part two of the three parts and this is servicing the amplifier. Um, so what's that going to read? Yeah, they're not well. These eight microfarad ones seem to be pretty okay. But we can see some splits and, and that. Well, there's two 100 microfarads I've taken out. And one of them is 235 microfarads. And that's always indicative that it's... Uh, isn't good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll be changing these for where possible uh, Nikki cons. And uh, he's got the eight, I mean, eight microfarads is, is back from the valve days. And these days we are, of course, replacing those with 10. So I'll be interested to see the next one, and then we'll uh, join the video later on. Oh, are you putting one in and taking one out? I've done both. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay, we'll join it later on then. To rejoin this video, I think Mr. Chippy's done all the capacitors apart from the, the big filter capacitor. Uh, am I correct? Yeah. Yes. And we've taken this huge capacitor out, which is that, and replacing it with that. Now, what's the voltage rating on the one you've taken out? Uh, 23. Yeah. And what's the voltage rating one we're putting in? 63. Yeah. Isn't that incredible how all those years have... <laughs> with these being PCB mount... I'm it's a bit of a... So, yes, it's a bit of a thing. You're going to wrap that round. I've, I've taken the tags off the old capacitor... I've put a hole in it so it's just going to fit over the... Uh, and then solder it that way so it's got mechanical rigidity. And I'll, I'll fold it over as well so it just isn't going anywhere. So that we'll be discarding one P-clip and it'll of course just be going in, in the second one. So that's it and then we're going to be... Yes, you're going to have to <laughs> put an extra hole or is there already a hole for that? No, we'll have to make Yeah, well, I think we usually do. So uh, then we'll test it on the bench speakers. And uh, well, that will be the moment of truth when we find that neither of the amplifiers work. It's a bit like the 2412 we're doing for the London customer, one of the amplifiers doesn't work. Right, we'll rejoin that in a bit. Right, well, Mr. Chippy has done his job. All the capacitors which we expect to have failed have now been replaced. And what a difference with that um, relatively small uh, filter capacitor in place of the less powerful one which was the original which is in that jar over there lurking. We've got the hoppy device ready and we'll check current consumption etc. First of all we've got to rig it up to the loudspeakers which are under the bench and I'll dig out a well first of all I'll just see whether we can get a hum on it from my fingers and if we can and I mean it may be dead on both channels with these germanium transistors and I don't think it's been used for decades um, if it works we'll apply a cassette deck onto the DIN and if it doesn't well I'll have to start fault finding and hope we can get replacement parts I know these AD140 transistors which it uses are very expensive these days right I just plugged it in um, without the speakers connected and upon switch on the mains fuse failed uh, sorry not mains fuse it's the secondary fuse there is no primary fuse on this so it's reliant totally upon the one in the plug so I looked at the hoppy device when I switched it on and I saw nothing excessive current so I'm going to put that down to uh, metal fatigue in the original fuse which is 1.25 amp it says 1 amp in the service manual um, and it's anti-surge so it might be a sensible thing to be 1.25 from um, uh, with an anti-surge so what I've done I haven't got any of those in stock I will order one it's inch and a quarter what I've done is to solder across a one amp um, 20 millimeter fuse just for now just to get it thing powered it up the second time and our one amp fuse hasn't failed so just to be clear the 1.25 original fuse just failed on switch on now that's as I say going to be metal fatigue after 50 something years so, I mean, to be honest, it, it would be sensible to... Uh, it's something I've not taken into consideration before. And I think we may be sensible to be changing 
all fuses in these um, once they, when they come in for service because of metal fatigue. I'm having them where it happens. So I've now connected up the speakers through various crocodile clips and we switch on and I can hear a nice germanium hiss coming from the speakers. Let's just widen that out a bit. Not that there's anything to see. And if I touch the input on the that's the right, that's the left. So we do have the amplifier working. So I'm going to hook it up to a cassette deck and let's um, see if we can hear something coming through the speakers. Well, that sounds absolutely beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. So our realistic cassette deck. This is the Reader's Digest collection on the on cassette. Just hope we don't get the copyright police with it. Okay, well, I'm very satisfied with this, and this is where we're going to end part two of this video. <laughs> Wow, there you go. So, no transistors, just the capacitors, metal fatigue with the fuse, no doubt. Um, great, we'll get it back in the cabinet and that'll be part three. Thanks for watching part two of the HMV Stereo Master 2018 uh, full overhaul and this is a product from 1966.